Hello everyone, it's me Daniel. In this video, I want to show you how you can elevate your renders with some simple but effective post-production in Photoshop. So for this video, I used my latest project that I used for my exterior guide in Lumion. Now we're going to enhance that render with some post-production. So for the first step, let's open Lumion. So in Lumion, we go to load and then I will open my latest project. So after the project is opened, we're going straight to the right down corner and we go to select the photo option. When we have selected, you will see the focal length hasn't been changed. So we need to select the photo that you want to render. So now the camera position is correct. And now we can go over here and press render photo. In the render photo section, there are a few things what we can do. I want to edit the, I want to export this at 4K. But before we do that, I want to have the additional output. Those are different maps that you can create from the same render. So in this case, I want to have the specular reflection map, the lighting map, and the material ID. After that, we can go and press print and give it a name and place it somewhere on your browser. After we exported all of our maps from Lumion, we can go straight to Photoshop and start the post-processing phase. So in Photoshop, we go to New File, and I have some default ones, but to create the same as I have, you need to have this resolution of the 4K one in pixels. I would have a resolution of 3000 pixels per, per inch. I want to use the landscape position, and I will use the 16-bit. Let's create our project. Now let's import all of our files. Let's select them all and just put them into Photoshop. Let's select Done, 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 and Done for all of them. And now we can see all of our layers. Map ID, I set it all the way to the back. The background will be deleted because we don't need that one. So we can delete this layer. Yes. Then for the lighting and the specular, we want to have this on top of our normal render or base render. Let's select this one. First the specular one. And let's set this to overlay. Let's do that also by the lighting. Now with the opacity, we can change the amount of light. I will hide the lighting map first and put the specular map on visible. Now with the opacity, we can play a little bit. Let's put it somewhere around 20%. Let's also do this for the lighting. Let's select this map and let's see how much we extra light we would like. Five is fine. Yes, five is fine. Now this step depends on what you want to do. And we can go to adjustments and then we have all of the effects that we can use and we can use this manually. For example, the brightness or the curve maps. I personally don't use them because that's taking a lot of time and you have all the separate maps. Uh, I normally select all of the files that I have. I'm going to merge them into one layer. So I have one map. Then I'm going to select the map and then I'm going to change it to a smart object. So we merged everything. We're going to select the map and then we go to over here to filter and add the camera overall filter. The reason why I use the camera raw filter is because it's easier to use and you can add all the effects to the basic layer that you have and you can see all the changes that it gives you. Otherwise you have to manually add everything and there is everything in one place. So back into Photoshop, we have all these kinds of effects that we can add. First, we're going to start with the light. The thing I like to do is press here on the edit and then press the auto option. So now Photoshop will give you an option of what they think that the image would look like or needs to look like. So I actually like to have a little bit more of an exposure instead of what they do. And we're going to change these effects. So for example, the highlights are indeed a little bit too high, but I will lower them even more. And the shadows could be indeed a little bit more, but not too much. And I like to add a little bit of contrast as well to not lose too much detail. The whites can be a little bit lower to my liking and the blacks also a little bit higher. That's it for the light. You can always go back to them. Then for the coloring, I like to make this render a little bit more warmer. So I will increase a little bit of the temperature. I'm not going to change the tint because I don't like adding a tint to my renders. And then for the vibrance, I will add a little bit more. So darker areas that are not so colorful will be will become more colorful and the saturation will be lowered. And the reason for that is because, because the saturation is going to decrease the color gradings, so it will be more realistic in the render. Then for the effects, for this render I like to add a little bit more texture. So the textures will come, so the textures will become 
more noticeable and have more detail and then i would like to decrease a little bit the dehaze and the reason is because now everything will be a little bit more brighter almost like the sun has more uh, illumination inside this scene can add a little bit more of a clarity make the render more clear i think that's it now after i've changed some settings i will also see that the, for the lighting i actually want to have the shadows a little bit darker and i like to make the whites a little bit even a little bit lower and maybe for the coloring i put the saturation a little bit higher for the curve i normally don't add too much of a curve or I change these I normally just select the middle ones because we have the shadow zero and the darks and the lights and the highlights as you can see in the right down corner I will select them mostly in the middle over here and then for example I put the, this one a little bit lower and the highlights a little bit higher so there is a little bit more contrast that's more fluid in this render for the color mixer I'm not going to change a lot the only thing I want to do is add for the aquas a little bit more to the blue side and the greens need to be the greens are really green so i'm going to change that a little bit make it a little bit more yellow and then we can talk about the visibility to see how it looks for the color grading i like to add to the highlights a little bit more yellow from the sun so the sun is coloring a little bit more of the highlights in the scene and for the shadows i like to make it a little bit more blue and the reason for that is for as you look in photos the illumination is actually changing the light the color of certain elements so shadows will always be a little bit more blue because more of the skylight is coming off on dead areas instead of the sun and the sun directly on top of certain elements uh, has the color a little bit more of a yellow, yellowish color so that will make, create, make the render a little bit more realistic then let's go to the detail you can add a little bit more sharpening to the scene to make it a little bit more sharper i normally don't use the noise reduction because most of the time there is not a lot of noise inside of the renders optics i don't normally use them you could add a little bit more of a bitnet to some renders to draw a little bit more attention to the middle or to the building we can add a little bit to spice things up and then there is an interesting one because it's, it says also an early access and that's the lens blur in photoshop itself let's see what it does we go to apply and then what photoshop is going to do is going to, it's going to manually or automatically it's going to see the render the depth of the render and then it's going to determine uh, which areas need to be focused and which areas need to be blurred out as you can see there is a little bit there is a slider over here and the best way to explain this we can select this visualize depth and now you can see the colors that indicates the places of the render so this purple is the entire blue and background and the blacks as well we don't want to have the sky being blurred out so we're going to add it to the scene and i want to have a little transition over here so i'm going to add these as well to the render to be more uh, sharp and this bush and the front over here i want that to be blurred so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this i'm gonna deselect the visual depth and as you can see now the blur effect is over here i find the blur effect a little bit too heavy so i'm going to lower that amount probably around 20 maybe a little bit more then the boost is also going to be a little bit lower so about 30. now we take a good look again to the render looking at the shades the colors i go back to the lighting and i'm going to decrease the highlights even more the shadows could be a little bit lower as well maybe put vibrance to 20. The saturation will be 15. so now we're going to impress okay and now you will see the difference that it makes so we can go over here to the smart filters and go to the camera raw filter we can hide this element and you will see this is the starting render that we made with all the layers and the maps that we merged together and this is how it looks with all the filters added post-production also really depends on what kind of render you make so for example this day scene it's really easy to just add some filters and try things out to see what looks better and what looks worse um, a night scene of course you have to put way different uh, filters and other settings than you will in a day scene but the steps that I take are still the same. So after we are happy with our render, we can go over here to the file and then we can go to export. And you can do a quick export to a PNG or you can export it as a different type of file. I'm fine with a PNG. So we're going to use that one or save it somewhere in your browser. So now let's see the difference between the export in Lumion and the export in Photoshop with the post-production that we did.
So these were the steps that I take in Photoshop to elevate my renders from Lumion. In the next video, I show you my workflow on post-production with AI tools to elevate your render even more. And it's also free, so make sure to check that video out. So for this one, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment and consider subscribing. And I hopefully see you guys in the next video. Bye!